to New World next week. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com. Globalism is losing its attractiveness. We got that story. Plus, beware, beware the Ides of April. But first, really great work, actually, from the Miami Herald. New Jeffrey Epstein accuser goes public. Defamation lawsuit, meanwhile, targets Dershowitz. A new victim has gone public in the Jeffrey Epstein case, filing a sworn affidavit in federal court in New York this past Tuesday, saying that she was sexually assaulted and her then 15-year-old sister molested by Epstein and his his companion, Blaine Mas- Maxwell, in 1996. Farmer, then 26, claims that she was employed by Jeffrey Epstein, a multimillionaire financier who lived in a vast mansion on New York's Upper East Side, and that she frequently saw school-aged girls wearing uniforms coming into the mansion and go upstairs. She was told that the girls were auditioning for modeling work. Then an art student in New York, Farmer said she reported her assault to New York police and the FBI in 1996. FBI documents released April 1st make a reference to Farmer having been interviewed in 2006 or 2007. However, Farmer, now 49 years old, said the FBI did not take any action against Epstein and Maxwell and or Maxwell. Farmer's affidavit is one of 15 exhibits attached to a defamation complaint filed in federal court in the Southern District of New York by Virginia Roberts Goofrey, G-I-U-F-F-R-E, one of Epstein's victims against Alan Dershowitz, big famed lawyer and one of Epstein's most powerful and you know vocal attorneys. Vanity Fair, by the way, interviewed and buried Farmer's story back in 2002 and in other related Epstein pedigate update news, Daily Beast, also doing pretty good work, found billionaire pedophile Jeffrey Epstein's secret charity. Billionaire pedophile, as they just straight up come out and call him that, Jeffrey Epstein may have stopped trumpeting his million-dollar donations to charities in light of accusations. He molested dozens of underage girls, but he continues to quietly distribute his wealth, including to the nonprofits of Deepak Chopra, Elton John, and a doctor linked to Trump, of course. Through a shadowy private network called Gratitude America LTD, Epstein apparently needed some favorable news to change the narrative and embarked on a public relations crusade, which is always really popular throughout history, that depicted him as a renowned science philanthropist rather than a convicted billionaire pedophile. Epstein and Dershowitz. Add in Kevin Spacey, Harvey Weinstein, old President Clinton, current President Swamp Thing. You can learn all about that and more, such as about how Epstein is also called the Guardian of the Sphinx from the latest Luke and Burmese video. They knew in 1996 why was nothing done. Do you care to take on that question, James? I think the question answers itself. This is one of those stories that uh, you can either encapsulate in one sentence or you need uh, 100 hours to talk about all the twists and turns. But the one sentence summary is pretty, pretty straightforward. The billionaire politically connected pedophile used pedophile blackmail to make sure that uh, the right strings were pulled and that he would get out of jail with a get out of jail free card or the closest thing that he could possibly get to it once the, uh, the wagon started to circle. Uh, the infamous plea agreement that was uh, covered up and by then U.S. Uh, District Attorney and current Labor Secretary Alexander Acosta in uh, a move that's finally being uncovered and they're starting to get to it. And as you say, Miami Herald has been doing great work on this for the last few months anyway and some other outlets besides. Uh, but the, yeah, as I say, this is, it starts to mushroom and get bigger and bigger and there's more twists and turns and nuance to all of this story. Part of Dershowitz's defense now is he's saying that uh, this uh, Ju- and, uh, Goofrey is, and her attorney are trying to extort money from Les Wexner by going after Dershowitz so that Wexner will pay hush, hush money and blah, blah, blah. And they're saying, no, we can prove that I, you know, I, I put these allegations out before I was even with his attorney and da, 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 da. 8,000 twists and turns. And then there's this gratitude America. Suddenly, you know, Ep- Epstein is trying to portray himself as some kind of a ph- ph- uh, philanthropist, right? He's uh, he's a great person, like Jimmy Savile. Everyone remembers how much he was lauded for his wonderful charity work. Uh, it worked for him. Maybe it'll work for me, at least until I'm dead. And then who cares, right? Um, I- again, 8,000 twists and turns. I can't possibly encapsulate or encompass all of it, even just the latest developments here. So I will suggest people dig into these sources a little bit more and uh, start going through this. And one thing that I found helpful, I've read this a number of times over the years, but actually every time I go back to it when there's new developments in the case, 
it gets more and more intriguing. It's the old New York Mag uh, profile, which I think was 2000, uh, there's no date on here. I think it's 2002, 2003, like way back when. Um, Jeffrey Epstein, International Money Man of Mystery, where it goes through back at that time before all of this came out and no, no one knew anything. Um, it was just talking, where did this guy come from who was suddenly managing all these billionaires' portfolios out of nowhere? And he's he's got he doesn't work on Wall Street, but he's connected with Wall Street. And we don't know what's going on. He was just a math teacher at Dalton. And suddenly he's this billionaire portfolio manager. What's going on? And, and there's a lot of key details in there that are worth going back to. So I'll put the link into that so people can, if they if it's your first time around or your 10th time around, there's still more to find in this case. Well, and I mentioned Vanity Fair. There, there have been times in the past where they do kind of good coverage, which will have lots of little interesting tidbits. But, of course, the time goes by, and they'll generally memory hole that kind of work. James, let me ask you. I think I, I think I know the answer to this question. Wasn't wasn't uh, Prescott Bush involved in the founding of USO to kind of cover up his whoops? I was doing so much business with the Nazis kind of action. You stumped me. I don't know. I, I've never. I, but you're probably right if you say so. Well, we'll have, we'll have to check that out, or we'll just pose that out to, to the rest of the audience as well. So even some of the other folks that that are connected to Epstein that show up on the you know the Lolita Express on the on the on the rolls, people like Bill Maher from from Tillich. So politics to high powered media, you go. Gosh, I wonder why this story doesn't get that much more coverage. But James, I mean, I've been talking about it on the morning show as far as you know, just fake left right politics goes here in the states, but just. Keep the popcorn popping, man, because it looks like the fake left and the fake right are all just kind of destroying each other. Uh, but, of course, it, you know, out of this destruction can arise what they often call for. Our second story this week on New World Next Week, episode 372, Russia says New World Order being formed. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov declared that the Western liberal model of society is dying and a new world order is taking its place. Lavrov made the comments at his annual meeting with students and professors, because that's always an important part of disseminating propaganda out throughout society, at his foreign ministry's diplomatic academy. Quote, the Western liberal model of development, which particularly stipulates a partial loss of national sovereignty. This is what our Western colleagues aimed at when they invented what they called globalization is losing its attractiveness and is no more viewed as a perfect model for all. Moreover, many people in the very Western countries are skeptical about it. Lavrov said, according to him, global development is guided by processes aimed at boosting multipolarity at what we call a polycentric world order. So, James, did he actually say new world order? Did he say polycentric world order? And either way, does it matter? It's still ringing that, ringing that bell, blowing that dog whistle. Well, that's right. I mean, I'd have to brush up on my Russian and check the translation, so I, I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, polycentric or new world order, it's the same thing. And this is an important part of the story that often gets neglected. People rail against the globalization system that they see coming into view. Rightly so, because it's horrible and it's obviously planned by people with uh, nefarious uh, intents in mind. But then when you topple that, what's going to come in to fill that power vacuum? And perhaps the real aim is to get the thing that comes in to fill the power vacuum. Maybe that's people who are sophisticated enough to see where this is going can set up the straw man so that you topple the straw man and then they can present the real solution. That's how these things work on a higher order. And I think this is the way we need to uh, conceptualize the, the bringing in of the new world order. It's not going to be the, the big straw man that you're attacking. It's going to be the thing that they're going to bring in to solve that problem once the big destruction has taken place. So we, I've talked about it many, many times. The polycentric world order and the bricks are the saviors narrative is one of the, the narratives that have been presented to people so that they will eventually accept what will amount to a form of globalism. Not necessarily the globalism that people see right now, but it will be a form of globalism. But it'll be better globalism. No, it won't. It will be the same thing in the end. And this is an important point. It's not one that I can make quickly, but I have written about it at length before. I will point people to an editorial that I wrote four years ago called How to Really Defeat Globalism, which talks about this false dialectic of nationalism versus globalism. No, it's not. That isn't the dialectic. And when they get you thinking in the wrong way, then it doesn't really matter which side of that phony debate you take because you're going to end up at the same place. It's an important point. I hope one will, uh, that, that will strike a chord with people or at the very least 
people will be intrigued enough to check that out because I think it's important that we uh, that we really get to the roots of this because what is the real solution to this? Are you going to choose, oh, I don't like that collective, I prefer this collective? <laughs> Wait, maybe there's another choice that's being precluded from our vision here. I actually saw someone on Twitter today, my one, you know, my one long time. <laughs> I, I don't really like to think of it as social media, but I, I saw someone on Twitter today have a quote that essentially said, you know, they give us our heroes and they give us our villains. I was like, hey, that's I've, I've been saying that on my show. And it was a quote from Albert Pike. So, indeed, these seeds are planted and you essentially said a variant of, of something else I like to say. If they can get you to ask the wrong questions, they don't have to care about what the answers are. Was it a man liquor Carcano or a, or a or Mauser? Which rifle did Oswald? It's those kind of questions. If they can get us fighting over things that ultimately are of no significance to the powers that shouldn't be anymore. Speaking of, one little uh, related geopolitical note on the grand chessboard, maybe another New World Order news. It looks like the Guaido CIA coup is sort of floundering around. The latest I got for you, IMF executives fail to recognize Guaido as Venezuela's interim president. Well, you know, how are they going to get that money flowing? So we'll keep watching that situation, James, as we're watching a lot of situations. I put together here for our third and final segment on this New World Next Week episode just something I call Beware, Beware the Third Week of April. And I've been talking on my show for now nearly 14 years how it seems like from the Ides of March till pretty much May 1st. And there's all the little occult holidays within there that sort of sprinkle through the days that there is just a massive confluence of what I would call catastrophic catalyzing events, not the least of which, like the sinking of the Titanic, maybe the start of the Revolutionary War, the Waco disaster, the Oklahoma City bombing, the Columbine massacre, the Virginia Tech shootings, the BP oil spill, and the Boston Marathon bombing, one of the most recent ones. I'm sure folks out there in the audience can add in some of the ones that I'm missing there, but those are the biggies. And what I want to do is basically add in here just what I'd call the Ides of April 2019 updates. Really interesting kind of kind of occulty, synchro-mystic things going on all around the world, kind of keeping an eye on not only just right now, but also this weekend and for the next couple of weeks. The story early this morning was, as the authorities were swooping in, Peru's ex-president shot himself, and ultimately he did die from those gunshot wounds. Peru's ex-president, Alan Garcia, dies from self-inflicted gunshot while being arrested on corruption allegations. We can find a couple of interesting flashbacks. Peruvian leader abandons Secretary of State Hillary Clinton at news conference. So, you know, it's probably just a coincidence there. Meanwhile, another story that was sort of developing here in the States as I, you know, I do my live show in the morning. So there is a bit of live coverage that I have to do. And of course, things shake out and finalize after the show. There was a warning put out. Actually, this was breaking yesterday. Some sort of vague warnings put out to schools in Colorado. There's somebody obsessed with Columbine. The 20th anniversary is this weekend. We're not sure what to do. The update on that story, Surfside Woman, Sol Pai was her name, S-O-L, which means son, Pai, P-A-I-S, infatuated with Columbine, dead in Colorado. Law enforcement said Sol Pai, a Surfside teen, and they're saying she was 18 years old, suspected of making threats to Columbine High School in Colorado, which shut down some 20 school districts today in Colorado. Right before the 20th anniversary of the Columbine Massacre is dead, they said she was found dead of a self-inflicted gunshot wound near the base of Mount Evans, ending a massive manhunt. Interesting bits swirling around that. An unidentified FBI agent answered her parents' phone in Florida when Denver 7 News called a phone number listed for Sol Pai's parents in, of course, Florida. Meanwhile, James, you know, I'm, I didn't call it media monarchy for nothing. This previous weekend, there's the big, massive concert festival in California called Coachella. I've never been, even when it was a little more affordable, it was still way too expensive. But they stream it every weekend. And for the last probably seven, eight years, I watch you know tons of bands over the weekend. You can stream it. You can basically turn up your speakers and stuff and essentially have kind of a party at home. One of the big headliners this year and one of the reasons the festival, much like we've also talked about South by Southwest and things kind of turning into a giant corporate thing you don't really want to be involved in. One of the giant big pop star headliners this year is Ariana Grande, 
one of the kind of kiddo pop stars that's all the rage. You might recall she was performing in Manchester back on May 22nd, 2017, when the Manchester Arena bombings occurred. This past week, in related to her sort of big upcoming Coachella slot, she shared a brain scan on her Instagram and talked about all her PTSD over the Manchester Arena bombing. So I can't help but see some of the synchronicities between her and a big, giant, massive concert that all the eyes of the world are going to be trained on. Meanwhile, that same day, Easter Sunday, Kanye West to bring Sunday service to Coachella for Easter. Apparently, he's been streaming these sort of private gospel concerts that are, you know, sort of non-disclosure agreements, you know, private locations. He streams a few seconds again on his Instagram. It is a part, you know, and I think that's why someone like, I, I see your faces being made there, James. I think it's someone why Kanye is so fascinating. There's such that mix of just sort of the, the sacred and profane seeming to do all these different sort of things all at once and doing a lot of interesting things on the pop a culture stage for these last, what, nearly 20 years. So he's basically going to be doing a Easter Sunday service in the middle of Coachella. So all of that swirling around this weekend, all of those dates of the April sinks. And the one other thing that leads into all of this, and I link it to my buddy Lauren Coleman of CopycatEffect.com, the Al-Aqsa Mosque and Notre Dame both burn as the iconic Cathedral of Notre Dame burned in Paris. A fire broke out at the historic Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem. That is the Dome of the Rock that I've talked about pretty much from the beginning of Media Monarchy. I was raised in the Baptist Church in the Satanic Panic 80s and was told that, the, you know, all, all these things are going to come come about. I'll include a link to the MuslimTimes.info. The coming destruction of the Dome of the Rock, a.k.a. the Al-Aqsa Mosque. One thing, basically, the Bible says needs to happen for the beginning of the seven-year tribulation period is the destruction of the Dome of the Rock, where the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem is situated. So basically, for apocalyptic prophecy to keep on a trucking, there's a Muslim mosque that's supposed to be blown up. You know why? To make Israel great again. So that's that's my watchful warning for not only this Easter 420 weekend, James, but leading us all the way up until May Day, Walpurgis, Beltay, and all these occult holidays. You know, May Day, around when they announced that bin Laden was whacked, James. My head is spinning from that psychedelic swirl of stories. <laughs> so I'm not sure which thread to pick out from that hodgepodge. But um, let me let me bring a perhaps needed note of skepticism to the numbers game and all of that, because... Uh, it strikes me that when you have, oh, not not a specific date, not April 19th or April 20th, but the third week of April, extending out to, you know, May 1st, something might happen. And look, over the past 250 years, you had an ocean liner sink, and you had a bombing, and you had a school siege and things. Like, what? <laughs> what is this predicting? It's predicting nothing at all. And something that doesn't predict anything is of zero value. So I would uh, I would just say that th this is like Shemitah territory nonsense. It just doesn't mean anything. But uh, I say that advisedly as someone who 10 years ago to the day, April 19th, 2009, released a podcast on April is the cruelest month where I detailed a lot of these things. And hey, look, this is the time of year where these things happen. So, so keep that in mind. But I'm, uh, uh, again, I'm, I'm very skeptical of these types of numbers, games and date predictions that are non-predictions. It can't all be happy, hippy-dippy, positive propaganda all the time there, buddy. <laughs> Uh, what is what sh Shemitah? What did you say? What is that? Shemitah. You don't know the Shemitah? Oh, look it up on Corbett Report. I, I talked about it at the time. S H E M I T A H. Don't worry. Sometime in the next seven years, there's going to be some cataclysmic event, and if it happens, I told you so. <laughs> Shemitah. All right. Well, and, and on on that note, James, I think we do have a deprogramming note to make that we are not going to be on the air for the next couple of weeks, correct? That is exactly correct. I'm going away on vacation for a couple of weeks, so it will be until uh, early May and maybe not even the first or second week. Anyway, we'll talk about it, but uh, it will be a, a few weeks now until the next New World next week. Okay. Well, while you are away, people can come get all their crazy, freaky, synchro, mystic news, music, memes, and more Monday through Friday on my streams at MediaMonarchy.com slash listen. James, I hope you have a fantastic break, and I will see you very soon. Right back at you, brother. Talk to you in a few weeks. All right, buddy. Take care.